get the episode review done. Oh, why did that pop up over there? Don't know. But hey, everyone, my name's Silver. Welcome back to the channel. And guys, this episode review is super early this week. Reason being is I didn't have work today, so I was able to watch it, get all the files done, and I did have to wait for a little bit of another video to finish rendering. <coughs> but with all that out of the way, I can finally review episode 15. And guys, this episode was amazing. As you can see, I have over 46 different screenshots to go over this week. So let's hop right into it. So we start off the episode with Tokoha. <coughs> um, wow, sorry, I coughed and... Oh yeah, the aspect ratio is a little off, but we're going to fix that now. Boop. We'll do that. And then we will do that because I'm one take, one try. And there we go. Now that the image is fully st st stretched across the screen, we can get into this. Where was I? Tokoha starts off by talking with our favorite residential Royal Paladin user G series, Shion. I had to think of his name for a second. So these two are sort of chatting about Chrono and Tayo. As you can see here, Tayo's badly injured. And they're talking about what happened with, Sh with the Chrono. And. Yeah, this is pretty much just like the opening 30 seconds. It's it's pretty nice. At the end, we get Jamie yelling at into Tokoha's ear about random things. And we get this wonderful picture of uh, what I assume to be Planet Cray. Now, that that's about it for the intro. And then while I was, you know, getting ready for all this wonderful stuff throughout the intro theme song, um, we also have another picture. Chrono sees it. I think they were trying to hide it from him, but they didn't really succeed this week. Not that they would have, because he has to go outside eventually. But he sees this. And then I noticed that we have a couple different images in the new, or not new, but semi-new intro for the song. So we have Lord Giza, our Lord and Savior. And we also get to see his new card in this new intro right here. And I'll be talking about that more later on in the episode review. There it, there wasn't a lot to talk about, and I got another picture of that just because I thought it was really cool. So, the scene is pretty much premature because I was fighting with my computer for a little bit. But, <clears throat> essentially, this kid right here in the center of this group of friends can see the giant ball planet thing in the sky, but these two can't. Although they are both players of Vanguard, so it's not like the Link Joker series where everyone could see the um, Rings of Destruction, but only ones with a strong imagination. And they call that the Stamp of Destruction. I, I guess the Apostles call it that. Um. So, yeah, there's that. And then Ibuki and all of them are talking about how, they, how um, Giza needs all six Xeroth Dragons to fully awaken his destructive power. So he's in task our favorite group of people, Mizaki, Kamui, Aichi Sendo, and Kai to guard it. So we finally get to see all of Q4 lined up nice and neat in a row once again. And honestly, with their part, like the, these Team Q4 finally getting together, um, the trader back with his original team. About time. Um, honestly though, I'm hoping that we'll get to see some really good episodes coming out of them up here in the coming future and not just some little sn cheap snidbits. <coughs> Being that we're getting Royal Paladin support, I hope so, and that I think we've already seen Kamui's support. So yeah, Q4 is in task with guarding Drachmo, which you see later in the episode. Um, now we have Tayo here, he's sort of in rehabilitation, he went through some surgery. Chrono feels like it's his fault. He barely says anything to Tayo, his good friend. But yeah, overall, it was a pretty interesting segment. I mean, the, the episode's pretty standard up until this point. We get Kazaki's older brother challenging Chrono to a fight, because that's what you do after you get out of the hospital is you go right back to card fighting. <coughs> but yeah, so he says, fight me. And they go up to the roof and fight. Um, Chrono's aunt comes to pick him up. And she sort of sees them walking up to the roof. Doesn't say anything. 
But yeah, no. Um, it's the first time we also get to see Chronosaut in forever. So, moving along. Um, what else? I'm, I'm trying to think. My brain's sort of not working. So, in, in this episode, during the fight, they bring it up at the point that Chrono will not be able to stride, Generation Break, or G-Guard at all. And honestly, I like this picture. It's a nice blank Gear Chronicle G-Zone. You don't see that ever because Gear Chronicle can't have a blank G-Zone because that means no skills can be activated. But we see it anyways. So there rip the $400 G-Zone. Um, I really do think this is symbolic of Chrono's progression through uh, is what he's going to be going through, especially in next week's episode. It's a nice empty field, and honestly, it it's just good. <clears throat> um, so again, there wasn't a lot going on. It was a pretty standard. Think of the episode from last year when Chrono lost Chrono Dran next stage and Chrono Jet. This is sort of like that similar fight with Ibuki, but instead with Murakumo user. So they get ready. They stand up the Vanguard and have a pretty standard. We don't get to see their starters, but we should already know them. Chrono Dranji and um, the uh, Nubatama starter for Dominate. <coughs> um, yeah, overall it was pretty fun. Pretty, pretty upbeat. Um, like I said, it was pretty standard. I just like this picture of the attacking dragon because he has a sword in his mouth. He's just cool. Leave me alone. Um, so yeah, they're just sort of, he's just sort of, you know, reminding Chrono of his failures from last week's episode. And I really don't know why I took this picture. Actually, I think it was one of the ones I was meant to delete, but hey. So then we finally get to see it. And I love the name of this. I love how he just rides it with a new Val I ride. And the art already, like, even with the purple tint over it, you can already tell this art is amazing. But he rides Blazing Demonic Stealth Dragon Shirinui Zekin. Zekin? I think that's how you say that. Zekin. <clears throat> and let me tell you, Zekin is pretty good. So he has an on-ride dominate. And I believe it's also on stride. So it's not like you have to stride. It's just... First grade three right of the game, dominate your rear guard attack. And we can see that here by the glowing red eyes of Lu Luoro. Weird name. <coughs> Sorry guys, I'm getting over a bit of a cold. So yeah, he dominates him and attacks Chrono's vanguard. And then we finally get to see the actual <coughs> full artwork. In the show, the candles sort of pop up, but my computer was being stupid and wouldn't let me take the screenshot, so I skipped over it. But I really like it. Um, Let's see, if we edit, we should be able to rotate, right, adjust, oh, here we go. We can just rotate, rotate, there we go. That's how people do it. Done. So there you guys go. Um, yeah. I'm um, trying to move back to... I've never done this, but yeah. Th so let's take a closer look while I, I guess, say, uh, save. So let's take a look at this wonderful card art. And I need to perspective fix it later, but... <coughs> Shiranui here. So he has a lot of glowing red tags this time. Um, bigger eye. He look. He looks far different from his original Shiranui, which is, in my opinion, a much better art. But this also gives Dominate decks, I think, a fighting edge, which I will be doing a video on this tomorrow. So when I'm done this, I'm gonna go record my thoughts on this card. So guys, be on the lookout for that tomorrow. Um, Chrono sees it and is like, "Oh no, not really." Um. Yeah, Chrono's just feeling really bad about himself as of late. This entire episode, Chrono was a downer. And was and his entire fight was pretty poor. So, um, as as um Sherry Nui's wielder, I always forget his name. Uh he's on important. The only important character is Sherry Nui. Um he's just reminding him Chrono's flashing back through like all of his times he's failed and he should have become Giza. <coughs> 
yeah, it was a pretty epic episode in the fact that Chrono was just feeling like a sorry loser. But um, as we see, the hand size is getting bigger with this deck. <clears throat> so Chrono finally decides that he's going to fight back a little, and Cherry Nui gets ready to fight back. Um, and Cherry Nui has an, a skill which seems to be Soul Blast 1, Draw 1. And he can call a unit from drop to rear before striding, and that's at the start of his turn. So he is definitely an all-around better unit than the old Sharanui for Dominate decks. <clears throat> and I see this card being very powerful. He uses a pretty standard formation. I believe he can even call a card from hand, because he does call one. Um, and Sharanui decks' hand sizes are getting bigger by the second. So um, he rides his pretty standard um, Murakumo unit, the one that dominates the uh, Vanguard. And then we get a random flash scene over to this one, which is Kazuto and the Xeroth symbol above him. <coughs> and he's just sort of lying naked in a chamber, so that's kind of weird. But it happened, and it was important enough for the anime to include, so it's important enough for me to include. Um, like I said, he rides his standard Murakumo unit, so we might see a reprint copy of this. We might not. I don't think so. But I have my copy. <coughs> and yeah, he's just beating on Chrono. And this moment is when Chrono's about to punch Chrono Dran, and shenanigans happen. I do think this is symbolic of Chrono losing a lot of his friends during this arc. Or he feels like he's losing people and putting people in danger and he's hurting them. And I think that really represents with Kazuto. So Chrono finally says, Chrono Dran finally asks the question that everyone's wanting to hear for the week. Or at least thinks we want to hear. Chrono Dran asks, did you wish you never met me? And boy, Chrono Dran, I bet Chrono wishes he never met you. Well, I think a lot of the community wishes you never met Chrono and vice versa and then we'd never have you. But besides the point, honestly, Chrono says no. And he has a bunch of flashbacks of Tokoha and Shion, who appears here, but my computer was also being stupid again this week. Um, we see Jamie, we see Ibuki and Tayo, and then we see Kazuto. And he realizes that he's hurt one of the people he's probably closest to in this entire series. Kazuto is like a really amazing character. And he realizes he's not only hurt, but he's put him in danger. <coughs> And then this is when he finally snaps and wakes up and realizes that he needs to start pushing forward. And he starts, he remembers every villain he's defeated thus far. Sharanui. But unfortunately, Sharanui's hand size is massive. Like, what the heck, Sharanui? <coughs> he also goes to Jigard earlier in the series and he's like debating it, and Gurno's just like, do it. Because Chrono realizes his G-Zone is gone. So they're fighting. And then Chrono loses. Chrono attacks with Chrono Jet one last time. And he just loses. I mean, what did you expect? Well, hand size versus... <coughs> three card hand size max. Yeah, Chrono was bound to lose this. And we have more of that symbolic... A fragment of the wheeler of the deck user's soul... Being defeated as the final grade 3. Literally, I could go through... Every episode review of Done, and this will happen to the loser. I I I don't think they understand. I don't think Busher understands what they're doing to the game, or doing by doing this. I mean, I guess it could have randomly happened, but every single loser of every single week, it's a little hard to ex explain, Bushiro. So after that, um, Sharanui tells him because I still firmly believe that he's an agent of evil. Or still diff -rated. But besides the point, Sharanui tells him there's a place he can go to get his unit back. And. <clears throat> or no, I think it's Tokoha tells him. Because Tokoha gives him a plane ticket, as you can see right here. Um. We have more of Chrono's Aunt. I, I took a screenshot. I don't know why. I think it's one of the ones that was meant to be deleted. So yeah, they go off. And then we get to see Chrono's father. And we see him from the back once again. 
So yeah, so this is where Chrono's going. I feel like this is who Chrono's going to fight next week. To get his G-Zone back from his father. And his father's either going to disappear or something silly like that. Or he's diff -rided. Really don't know. There's like just so many random odd characters to be diff -rided. I mean, we had one, we had two random ones last season. That had no progressive point to the plot. And then we see his face. Um, something. Shono, uh, whatever. Yeah, so he's going to definitely be in next week's episode. I have a firm belief of that. But also, I think next week's episode might be just a fight between Shion and um, Vios. Because that's what this imagery is. But one of them picks up a sword and Shion is kneeling. So I feel like Shion might actually lose his life next week. We might finally see a character die in G. You know? But overall, what was this episode? This episode was pretty laid back. It was just, again, it was n really no different than the season prior, bef before Stridegate ended over a year ago, or just under a year ago, <coughs> when Ibuki fought Chrono. It was the exact same concept in this way, guys. It was a good episode, but I don't think it was really all that outside of the box. All the difference was is this one had, didn't have a G zone, whereas the last one did. It was just Chrono's command. So I'm going to end the episode off here. Tell me what you guys think down in the description below. Guys, last week we killed it on 100K. We made it 1,078 views last week. Can we please push that to 1,100 views this week? That would be amazing. If we can shoot above that, that would be even better. Now, guys, my goal for the end of January is 200 subs. But YouTube is killing small channel content, so if you could please smash the like and subscribe if you're new, and let's try to get me up to a thousand subscribers so I can keep doing this on a regular basis. I've already taken way too much of you guys' time. I'll see you all later. Peace.